Uh, welcome to the Lightning Talks. We have uh, Ben. Ben is uh, building uh, Apple Watch <laughs> mobile app. Now, Apple has not released the SDK yet, but uh, it's based on iOS 8, and Ben has figured out an uh, Apple Watch simulator. So, this may be the first Apple Watch uh, app you'll see. Ben, thank you. I like the applause. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So, um, I have been uh, teaching classes um, on Swift and things like Facebook's Origami, trying to prepare for the Apple Watch coming out. Um, and um, so um, we've been meeting here at the dojo um, during the week, and uh, yes, absolutely. Um, so we've been meeting here at the dojo um, in the conference room, um, and uh, if you want, you can join our meetup group. It's called Apple Watch. But uh, what do we know about the Apple Watch so far? Well, we know that um, it's going to have two sizes. Uh, for your wrist, um, they're going to have a small one and a large one, and um, people are going to be able to make iPhone apps talk to the watch and send notifications, but you'll also be able to make apps for the watch itself, and um, that's really where my interest is. So let's show a bit of a demo about what's possible. So this is a, a demo app that I made, it's called Heartbeat, and what it does is it shows your heartbeat in real time as it's happening. And as your rate changes, you'll notice that it updates the beats per minute that are displayed down there in the lower right hand corner. So now this is a normal beat of 80. And uh, you can scroll back in time to see kind of your uh, rhythm strip. And we'll give it a second here and see what happens when there's an erratic heartbeat. So this is slow, so you can notice that the, the graph has changed there. Um, so, so we have um, all these different kinds, so the, the green one, erratic, would be an arrhythmia, and so um, I'm just using emoji for the icon, since Lyft is cool and you can use emoji in the code. Um, and finally, I'll just uh, put this up and say that uh, we have a Build a Swift app bootcamp coming up on November 2nd, and a watch kit hackathon coming up on November 23rd. So Apple should be releasing the real watch kit that we can develop apps for in November. Yes. And uh, I post everything on happy.watch if you want to check out all the stuff that we've done so far. Thanks very much. Sure. Um, so, so I love programming in Swift a lot better than Objective C because I seem to be able to get things done a lot faster. I mean, if you just take a look at the string in Swift, strings are just in quotes, but in Objective C, you got to type a whole bunch of crap. <laughs> um, and so, you can um, make Objective C and Swift talk back and forth to each other. Um, but if you know, if I were going to jump into this, I would do Swift. There's still a few bugs, but they're working out over time, and if you're making a long-term bet, go for the new stuff. <laughs> that would be awesome. Well, one, one thing we talked about is the watch can um, tell when you press down hard on it, and so um, it, you can make like a game where you're shooting something, and so just tapping it is like the normal gun, and then you press down hard, and that's like a missile or something like that. Oh, <laughs> that'd be cool too, yeah. A drum. A drum. Mm -hmm. What time is your, uh, your Swift boot camp? Um, it's going to start at noon on Sunday, November 20th. November 2nd. Here? Yes. Mm -hmm. Any pizza? 
<laughs> I'm working on getting some snacks. Right. Swag. Can the watch tell if it's been unbuckled? Uh, yes, it can. So um, when you first put it on, um, you'll have to unlock it like you unlock an iPhone, and then it knows that it's staying in contact with your skin and with your heart rate, and so that's how it kind of stays unlocked, and that way you can use it for things like Apple Pay. So if you undo it, then you have to unlock it again. Apple Pay works on the watch. Yeah. Yes, Apple Pay works on the watch. Wow. <coughs> Do you know if you can generate graphics in your shell script that contains Swift code? You can use Swift in the shell. Correct. But you yes. can also generate graphics. Like, is the answer to this and all that sort of stuff? I haven't seen that yet. Okay. Yeah. Can you write the function in native code? What, what do you mean native code? Whatever the processor instruction set is. So um, Swift kind of compiles down to native code. Um, and you can, use, you can use C inside of Swift. Um, but I don't know about any more generic code. Yeah, I mean, so one thing that I've done is um, a lot of the examples that Apple has in their documentation are still in Objective-C, so sometimes I have to kind of convert those. And um, it actually isn't really too bad, you know, once you've kind of learned the, the differences and how you, you know, uh, create a new instance of a class, um, then it's pretty easy. Um, what Thank you guys so much. Uh, if people have uh, questions on Swift, can they come ask you? Yes. If you have questions on Swift, please uh, come ask Ben. Uh, the Apple Watch also has haptics, which means uh, if you're uh, if you're using GPS and you go left instead of right, instead of like Google Glass telling, hey, you're going the wrong way, the watch will vibrate a set number of times. So interesting things will happen. Uh, before we move on to our next speaker, Moodley, if you could set up, please. Krishna, Modi Krishna. We have a couple of announcements. Uh, Chinese Gadget Corner is giving up a piece of swag after the end of the lightning talks. Uh, hey guys, Steve. my name's Julia. I'm the co-founder of Chinese Gadget Corner. We are at the entrance of the Hacker Dojo, you know, showcasing all the crazy gadgets there. So I'd like to let us know, I'll let you guys know that we are starting a brand new meetup group. It's called Hardware 599. You can tell from the name, it's purely hardware focused. And our first meetup will be scheduled on November 5th at Hacker Dojo, there at the large event room. And uh, we will have, it's, uh, this, uh, this meetup is sponsored by LaPau. And we'll have Ben Bateman from Indiegogo to tell us how to successfully launch a hardware project on Crotone platforms. We'll have three to four hardware teams to demo their latest projects or products. And we also have a raffle for the for one piece of um, coolest gadgets in our corner. So today I'm going to do a raffle at the end of lightning talk about the information I just talked. So I'm going to ask a question when all of the talks finished, and uh, the one that answered the question correctly will get this. Uh, it's a power bank with a evil shape. So thanks for listening, and uh, we'll post our. Event info on the meetup.com and welcome to check us out. Thanks. Thank you, Julie. Uh, Krishna. Krishna is an agile entrepreneur coach and uh, he's going to talk about how entrepreneurs can be hired by people. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, first question was how many of you are bootstrapping? Quite a few, apparently. How many of you are actually making the money you need to support your lifestyle? <laughs> Not even your business, just your lifestyle. Raise your hand. So how many of you are struggling to meet your lifestyle? Okay. Not even do your lifestyle. Uh, okay, do your lifestyle. So yes, I'm struggling. Uh, it's okay to admit that. All right. So, uh, and how many of you are working part-time somewhere or full-time somewhere consulting and working on your startup the rest of your time? All right, cool. So this is a, a problem I've seen. Um, uh, I've been in the valley since '96. Uh, 
in the US much longer than that. Uh, been bootstrapping startups, not quite made it yet, obviously, since 99. So been around, seen the dot com boom bust and the whole cycles. And um, the challenge of doing a This is how it looks if you go and create your profile. Can you see this? I thought it was going to zoom. Okay. Showing the opposite. Well, there's four parts to it. This is some, the most important part is what's your primary expertise and what does it mean? And what are your terms? I'm not flexible on this, how much money I need to make. It's a many to many thing. Okay, I'm out of time. Very quickly, this is how you would fill it up. And this is how it looks. This is the list I share with employers. And there are a few other tips on how to work with employers. If you're an employer or you know somebody who wants to hire you, I work with them to get the most value out of you. That's it. Questions? No, it's very low tech. Uh, the ha whole purpose is this. And one of the fundamental mistakes most entrepreneurs make is they just code and code and code and build and build. We spent 40 hours writing code and three weeks uh, selling. And so yeah, it's not about how many features you throw in. Is, is there a customer who will hire you because you added, added that feature? That's really the question to ask. My co-founder will not give me the time of the day unless I justify why we need to implement this feature. And once I have closed the sale, then we will add the next one. Well, how entrepreneurs are finding us on there? Yeah. I mean, how will startups? How will, how, start how will I will I will connect you with them right now? And I'm doing that. We have like about 15 interviews done so far, and two potential has ones one deal is already closed. So on the terms the entrepreneur had. By the way, this is a very pricey guy, 150 bucks an hour guy. Not not something mean share. So uh, you know where to find me. If you don't know, come to the ping pong table. You know, I've been known to be hanging around there. Thank you. Thanks, man. Uh, we are all looking very serious. Let's uh, let's talk some fun stuff. So one of the projects I was working on is a robot that can talk. And we finally got the robot to sing. Now, uh, you know Brian, right? He's our executive director, and we were talking. So what we're going to do and um, is get the robot to say, um, you've got big balls, and have pink sensors attached, and put it in the men's. Um, yeah. So be careful, guys. Uh, you've been warned. <laughs> Robots in the men's. And with use of female voice. Speaking of robots, we have John. And uh, all of us know who John is. John is going to show us uh, Mood Lights, which is programmed using an Arduino uh, over Bluetooth LED. So, BLE and Arduino. So, uh, hi, I'm John. You may know me as the guy who runs the computer vision meetup, but uh, I also spend a lot of time messing with uh, Bluetooth LE. And closer to the mic. You can move the mic Yeah, let's see. How's that? Perfect. Okay. So, and that's working. So, so let's see. So, uh, like I said, I. I got into Bluetooth LE about a year and a half ago. Uh, at first, I couldn't figure out what the big deal was about. But then I, I learned a little bit more about Bluetooth LE. Uh, notably, uh, I mean, so first of all, it's, it's low power. It's designed to run on a, a, a button cell for like over a year. And it's built into the Bluetooth 4.0 spec, which means basically every chip, every chipset for every phone has Bluetooth LE now. Uh, and often the OS supports it. Uh, it's been supported on iOS since the iPhone 4S came out, which would be three years ago. And it's been uh, 
supported at various levels on uh, Android for about the pa a little over the past year, and actually works in Lollipop. So uh, for me as an iOS developer primarily, the biggest, most important thing to me about Bluetooth LE is it doesn't require app going through Apple's made for iPhone program. If you've ever done this, if you have an external device and you want to interface it with an iPhone, uh, traditionally there's been a very long, time consuming and painful and expensive process to get that little made for iPhone uh, logo on your package so that it, and, and the accompanying hardware to make it actually work. Bluetooth LE is wide open. You can just uh, release an app to the App Store just like any other app. So uh, given that, I needed something to play with. Uh, I had something to play with. How many people know what this guy is? Hey. Okay, everybody else, this is an Arduino. This is the probably the most popular single board microcontroller in the world. Uh, it and it, there are over a million of these have been sold through uh, December of last year and probably more than a million more of various clones. Uh, so everything you have with Arduino on the end is either is this or wants to be this. Um, so an Arduino is very good at switching things on and off and re responding to inputs of various kinds. Uh, so I did, I did, once I had an Arduino, I had some, needed to have something to talk to it. And so what I got, this is from Adafruit, one of the most popular uh, electronics hobby sh uh, and Arduino uh, stores online. And this is a, uh, yeah, it is the same slide. It's a Blue Fruit LE. It's a, it's a uh, tiny little chip, I'll show you. Okay, that was less than cool. Mm -hmm. uh, it's this tiny little thing, roughly the size of, do you can remember what a postage stamp is? That, that thing there. Uh, it's a, and it speaks uh, Bluetooth LE and uh, SPI interface. Uh, so that gave me something I could talk to the Arduino with, and then I needed something to do with the Arduino to show that I was actually talking to it. And so I got one of these. This is a Blink-M. This is a, a tiny little module that uh, lights a RGB LED. It actually, on the back here of the device, uh, is a tiny little uh, ABR chip, the same chip as in an Arduino. And now let's uh, get to the actual demo. So. I call your attention now to that little device over there, which hopefully, is it talking to me? Of course not. Yeah, there we go, we got green. Uh, so that little device over there, the one that's green right now, now it's red, now it'll be blue, and uh, white, and green, and now it's off. And that's all being done, as you can see right here from the, uh, from the iPhone screen. So the, what's happening is the commands are being sent over the, uh, over the air through Bluetooth LE to the Blue, to the blue Fruit board and from there onto the blank camera. So to see, uh, this is a close up of what the board looks like. Uh, all you see here is a, there's the, the uh, Blue Fruit, the blink and the other thing is an AVR chip. That's the chip that's at the heart of an Arduino and is actually the brains of it. And it turns out you don't actually need any of the other stuff if you have that and a battery, which is what I have over here. Uh, if you're interested in programming the actual AVR chip from an Arduino separately, I recommend this book from Maker's Press called AVR Programming. It talks about unbundling Arduino both in terms of uh, unbundling the hardware from the, the little single board controllers so you can actually just use the raw chips and also unbundling from the IDE because Arduino is perfectly programmable from the GCC tool chain. Uh, and this book covers both of those subjects. So that's my talk and that's me. Um, and uh, I'll be around if anybody wants to talk Arduino, Bluetooth, LE, uh, computer vision, iOS development, and uh, as of last week, Android development. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Um, this should have been part of John's introductions, but he's been doing this for a really long time. He was with Autodesk, he was with Google, and he has robots that can follow him, and he often is seen following robots around here. <laughs> uh, good news, guys. Uh, Hacker Dojo people went and won uh, the Salesforce um, hackathons. So in between three teams, we have $120,000 worth of uh, prize money. Yeah. 
Last month, actually, this is uh, that was unexpected that a hardware fire 99 was started. So, uh, so this is another meetup I started. So, uh, this the meetup called the Bay Area Kernel VM Hackers. Uh, the this meetup is a subdivision of the original community in Japan, and the community the, this community is for uh, pure enthusiasts. Like it's not like a business, but like, you know. So the, this uh, the meetup is not for the business, not for the like monetize, not for the funding. It's the meetup is for pure uh, learning, pure studying uh, for the engineering, and uh, all events going to be uh, open at the Hacker Dojo. So, so what are we doing? Is uh, share your knowledge within the Bay Area. So, share what you studied and share what you uh, learned, share what you uh, working for, and then keep up with your skill within the Bay Area. So, discuss and discuss about the latest technology. That's all I want to do. So what are we focused on is uh, we actually not focus on already know and we actually not focus on the hardware. We focused on the software side, but it's low level. Like for example, Linux kernel, uh, free biscuit kernel, embedded system, or virtualization, or maybe open source software or programming languages. So for example, like a uh, new new C plus plus language, or maybe a uh, Go language for. Ruby or Python, anything. So we did our last event uh, in this month, uh, early October. Uh, it's called Arm Embed Meetup. Do you know, guy? Uh, do you know Embed? Embed is a. Uh, this is part of the Embed board. Uh, this is uh, made by Arm. So this is. Uh, it's. Quite similar to the Arduino, but it's more uh, powerful and it's more open. And actually, um, ARM guy is coming to Bay Area that, that week, so I we invited the embed ARM team, uh, embed development team from ARM, and we had uh, three speakers: uh, one from uh, Mr. Chris from the ARM, and one from the community developer Mr. Tsuboy, and uh, one uh, me. And next, we have a next event on November 3rd. Uh, this is uh, called How to Hack with an Edison Module. Uh, you guys uh, know Edison? No? Uh, it's a new hardware uh, release from the Intel. Uh, this is uh, Edison. So this board is uh, it's actually running a Linux, and it's an x86 Atom processor on here. And it's, this is a new, latest technology. So I'm gonna do some uh, session how to actually how to work, how to connect the hardware, how to build a kernel, and uh, what is a Yapto or where to, where can I buy it, or how to create the hardware with this module. And we also looking for the speakers who is working with Edison that project. And the future event gonna be a uh, like a uh, free topic event. It's you can talk any technology, you can talk at any level. So we are uh, we are very uh, looking for the speakers who can talk with anything you are interested in. Like for example, the next kernel, FreeBSD, or even, you know, you can, you can speak Arduino, you can talk like a birthday buy and that open source. So please, uh, if you want to talk with our, with our event, please ask me. Thank you. Um, 
We have the names of the teams who won the Dreamforce Hackathon. Thanks, Ben. Ryan MacArthur won the first place, uh, which is a $100,000 prize, for building an Android app which displays Salesforce data directly on the screen when another party is in this year in Wow. Uh, other Hacker Dojo teams include John Park's team and Team Diffbot, who both play 6th and 10th place and took home 10,000 bucks. So if you guys find Ryan MacArthur, John Park, or Team Diffbot, hound them for pizza and beer. Mm -hmm. uh, Julie, are we ready for the... Yeah. Okay. The question is, who sponsored Hardware 599's first meetup? Okay. You didn't, and you didn't check the website? <laughs> New question. Yeah, okay. You got the fastest connection, and this one's for you. It's a power bank. Thanks, guys. Um, have a lovely weekend. Live long and prosper. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man.